Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. I'm on Dartmoor at Emsworthy Mire. It's the first time I've been here, so let's go and explore and see what I can find, shall we? Well, this is the first time I've been to Emsworthy. It's quite a popular spot, very close to Saddle Tor and Hay Tor. It's very busy in the summer. So I tend to avoid the popular spots and seek a little bit of uh, solitude. However, it's still uh, early February and uh, early in the morning, and I'm sure that there's still something to see here. This uh, small nature reserve here is uh, managed by the uh, Devon Wildlife Trust and it's one of the uh, remaining wetlands in the moor. So springtime there's lots of uh, bluebells here and then summertime you've got summer migrants coming in like uh, Red Star and of course with the uh, wetland, lots of aquatic specialists. So there's dragonflies, lots of uh, wetland uh, flowers. But I'm here in the middle of winter. Now there are some winter visitors. There's uh, the great grey shrike, which I'm probably a little bit late to see. They'll be here in sort of maybe October, November time. But who knows, there's still Lots of bird life flying around this morning. And of course, this red roof barn and the trees make some great subjects. Overcast, but maybe dramatic sky, so let's see what we can get. So a little overcast still, and a bit dim to take any really good photographs. But I've come prepared, I've brought two lenses. 16-55 Sony G lens for the landscapes and I've also got my 200-600 to 600 for any wildlife, especially the birds. Well I have been taking some handheld shots but this is the first one I've got the tripod out for. It's uh, very dull and uh, I want to capture some colours in the uh, barn and those trees. No leaves on them this time of year, obviously, but covered in moss. And even on a dull day to, like today, if I get the exposure right, I should be able to recover a good photograph. And of course, although that cloud looks quite grey, I'm sure I can make something of that. So, settings wise. So I'm controlling the ISO, I'm at ISO 100, and the aperture is at F11 because I want a half decent depth of field, get everything in focus. And uh, that means I'm controlling the exposure with my uh, shutter speed, as you can see. So at about tenths of a second, I've got obviously a bright sky and a dark uh, barn and trees. So the histogram's showing two peaks at almost either end. So I'm trying to balance those. Don't want to blow those highlights out. I can probably go up to an eighth of a second. So I'm then going to focus in on the barn, to be honest. Quite difficult to do so in this uh, dim light. I think it is about there. I will try it with an auto 
focus as well. Okay, just make sure the strap doesn't flap around and put extra vibration in. Two second timer. And that's the first proper shot. Well, certainly not my best photograph, but then this was a scouting mission. So I wasn't sure what I was going to find. And as you could see, the conditions were pretty poor. And although I've tried to recover the sky, you can see that there's some bright areas around the trees where I've tried to edit just a little bit too much. So a little bit disappointed to start with. But I did try making this into a black and white image, just leaving the red roof of the barn, which I think works a little bit better. But um, the angle of the trees and that empty space on the right hand side doesn't really work for me. Anyway, walking down to the barn, I did take some handheld shots, which I was actually quite pleased with. So walking down from the car park at uh, saddle tour you come past this gate looking back at the tour now there was a little bit of light as the sun was coming up which i managed to get and the angle of the gate just looks nice and as you approach the barn there's this path and this uh, stone wall that makes these S curves down towards the trees. Makes a lovely leading line. I've left this in colour but I have toned the greens down a bit and just pushed up the uh, more autumnal colours. Okay let's try a few more of those maybe slightly different compositions and then I'll uh, take a wander and see what else I can find. So this is a real mix of habitats. Um, you've got this sort of uh, bracken scrubland with some small thorn trees and then you've got the tours beyond and some open moorland and then looking down that way I can see the mire itself in the in this sort of valley there. Now, it's these transitions between the wetlands, this scrub and the open moorland that uh, really makes the wildlife that little bit more interesting. It's uh, still very dull and not great for wildlife photography. Could really do with some light. Plenty of birds around if I took the time just to sit and watch. But I think I'm still going to wander, see what landscapes I can find while it's still dull. And hopefully it'll get a little bit brighter. But something for everybody here. Well, I'm sure you can see what I've seen. Just as I've come down towards the stream along this boardwalk, really damp, this uh, lovely twisted tree covered in moss. There's absolutely no separation from the background. It's a completely chaotic scene. 
but it just looks really nice. So another handheld shot and we'll see what we can do with that. Now I'm just going to use F11 because I want to try and get some depth of field again. Um, one hundredth of a second because I'm hand holding it. I'm using ISO, auto ISO, but I'm actually asking it to underexpose by about a stop and a half. I'm just going to keep it dark in here. Let's see what that looks like. Well, this is better, much more my style. I do like these uh, twisted trees covered in moss. And as I've said, I've kept this relatively dark and put quite a heavy vignette on this uh, photograph. Toned down the colours slightly. And uh, it almost looks like this tree is trying to escape this uh, mire. Same with this one. I like these alternative looks from uh, well-known uh, places. Most people recognise uh, Emsworthy Mire for all the bluebells in the spring. But to me, just as dramatic are these uh, pathways and uh, these black and white images. I've just emerged from that little woodland onto this open bit of land, it's still boggy. And as soon as I came through the gate, unfortunately, I uh, spooked a heron that was a little bit further along, which is uh, disappointing. I wanted to be really quiet, so there's also I can hear a buzzard flying around as well, and there's lots of birds here. So just heard a woodpecker as well. So. I think it's time to put this long lens on. And uh, move a lot slower. Make sure the glass is clean. We're not having much luck with that long lens just yet. But I uh, have come across this <laughs> lovely tree. There's a, couple of really big trees at the uh, back end of uh, or the north side of uh, the mire. Really old, lots of holes in them as well so lots of birds and maybe even owls nesting here. Mind you the longer I stand here the more the birds are becoming used to me being here, so starting to come back. As I said at the beginning, this is just a scouting mission, not been here before, so I didn't know what I was going to find. You always chance it if you try and cover, cover everything. Best to come out with an idea of either landscape or wildlife. I would have worn much more subdued colours, although this is uh, blending in quite nicely in these uh, rusty colours out here. Yeah, I need to be here and be prepared to sit around for a long time. Well, it was a lovely peaceful spot. Looking back across the mire, I noticed these two trees and what looked like a gate. And this letterbox shot really works well. A bit random, wasn't sure about it to start with, but the two posts on the uh, right and the gate and the trees, they all balance themselves quite well. Even the trees in the far right and the colors are really nice.
So, yet another change in habitat. Been through that woodland across some uh, grassy mire and now we're just about to come into some gorse. I can hear birds but haven't seen any that are close enough to photograph yet. Okay, let's keep going and see if there's anything else to find. Well, back out onto the open moorland. That was warm in that last section. I had to ditch the hat and the jacket. But uh, the hat's back on. I think I've now got an open stretch across towards the tours and back to the barn. Maybe some opportunity for some more landscape here. Maybe some uh, trees against the um, sky maybe. As I'm walking back across the moor you get a really good uh, vantage point down into this basin where the mire is with the uh, huge tours of uh, hay tour and saddle tour in the background. This marker post gives a real good idea of how clean the air is up here with these lichens growing on everything. Well, I was hoping to find a nice tree and I think I found one. Quite a large thorn bush. Very twisted, broken down a little bit, but it frames the tour behind, so uh, I might be able to get something there. Let me show you. So I haven't worked out the, the right angle yet. Might be a little bit further over here. Or, uh, or the other way, I don't, really don't know. Haven't worked out the height or angle. But what I do see over there is that tour, which is uh, sort of framed by the tree might be nothing but it's worth a go. Well as you can see that's the composition not sure if it works that well with the tree above and below the horizon. I've tried to keep the branch on the right below the horizon and uh, frame the tour. Settings wise f11 again ISO 100 and uh, 1 50th of a second again using the shutter speed to control the exposure. Well as you can see I was really trying hard with this photograph but in the end not sure that it really works. It's a lovely subject and the idea of having the tour framed in the background is not a bad idea but there's just not a lot of separation between the lower branches of this tree and the background. Yes there's a nice silhouette in the sky but um, maybe something to try on a different day. Well, I can see the barn in the distance, but it looks like I've got another valley and woodland to cross. An ever-changing uh, landscape here. Definitely well worth a visit. So for the first time being out, I've actually uh, run my battery out on the uh, Pocket 2. So I'm going to have to film with the Sony. Um, I haven't got a microphone attached, so hopefully the sound's okay. Just come across this gate on the way back. Got to take a handheld shot of this, haven't we? Tree, gate. Let me show you what I mean. Well, as you can see, I was taking photographs of everything I could find. 
This is the sort of thing you do on a scouting mission. And it's good to uh, build up a library of ideas because uh, the next time you come back you can uh, have some idea of where you're going. You can maybe judge the weather conditions better and uh, who knows what you'll, you'll find the next time. Anyway, back to the barn and viewing it from this side looks a bit more balanced. The first image I took, the trees were far too high on the uh, left hand side of the image. This works a lot better and I can see if I was to come back here in springtime with the bluebells out, this would uh, make quite a good image. So worthwhile a visit. But as always, you know I like my black and whites. Just leaving the uh, roof of the barn red. This works a lot better for me. I have uh, increased the contrast and made the uh, blacks a little darker. And uh, a slight vignette just to concentrate your eye on the centre. Well, I've made it back to the barn. I've been all the way around the nature reserve, but now I'm back here. I think I'll stop for a coffee and end the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you somewhere again next week. But for now, cheerio.